Hello and thanks for joining us for Encore. Coming up on today's show... We get a glimpse of a new Rembrandt. No, the 17th century painter's not back from the dead, but his celebrated style has been resuscitated. The wastelands of Los Angeles have spawned some colourful creations as West Coast artists bring their poetic pieces to Paris. And we're joined in the studio by painter Franz Ackermann, whose new show questions cities, travel, and even the very walls of the gallery it's exhibited in. Franz Ackermann, thanks so much for being with us. Hello. Your new show at the Gallery Daniel Templon here in Paris involves paintings, of course, but when we went to visit it being installed, I saw that you were using the gallery itself as a canvas. Can you tell me about your approach to the gallery setting? Uh, uh, I started usually working on an empty canvas in the studio after I made my journeys or my travels through cities or countries all over the world. So the idea came up already a while ago that this kind of elusive, empty canvas is very close and similar to the empty white wall in an empty white space, which we call gallery. So it was very logical for me to start questioning how this elusive point of this surface, emptiness, white, can be interacting with my products, uh, my paintings, and that's why I'm not stopping with the delivery of these kind of paintings. I start bringing it to an event in a form of a uh, three-dimensional experience. A total experience, as it were. Well, let's take a look at some of the new work from Franz Ackermann at the show. Now, you mentioned cities. A lot of your work references urban centres. We've got Calcutta, Istanbul, Montevideo in that show alone. What is it that interests you about cities as a subject? It is, uh, it is, the main question is that I am curious. I'm curious in a form like a lot of other people. It's very natural. Uh, I think travelling uh, became a huge mass medium. It became a global tourism industry and I'm actually a part of it. But uh, simply I have a profession, I'm an artist, and uh, regarding that fact, uh, there's a link in history, in art history, uh, how artists tried to get new, new impulses, new aspects of the work while they are moving. And uh, simply on that point, uh, I'm more into the more urban conglomerations where I think uh, something has to be changed or something changed or something uh, is in a status quo where we can learn a, bot, uh, a lot. And this kind uh, of travelling into cities is a, a model. Mm -hmm. Well, this experience of space is definitely a, a recurrent theme in your work. But today, with modern technology, the virtual world, the, the planet's getting smaller and smaller. Do we still need to travel? Could you not create your, your pieces based on virtual experiences? I could, I could. But I think the next generation is doing it better. So the surface, which comes from a very, very empty situation, an empty sheet of paper, an empty canvas or even another surface. It can be a screen, but this form of emptiness and, uh, is something which brings me to a, to a point of zero. And I think this is a very important thing to humans, let's say, uh, very, very, uh, in a slang word, but uh, uh, it's uh, simply a very basic question how to act with nothing and to come to the point. 
Okay, well, speaking of digital innovation, a team of art historians, scientists and computer programmers have revealed what they call the next Rembrandt in the Netherlands. No, it's not a masterpiece from beyond the grave. This portrait was made by a 3D printer using a specially formulated algorithm to recreate Rembrandt's style. The team spent 18 months analysing the 17th century painter's existing body of work and then fed that information into what is essentially an app. The reproduction is part of a research project exploring innovation in art and has prompted some raised eyebrows from art critics. Franz, what do you think? Is this a great progress for the art world or something we should be worried about? It is a, it is a great progress for the science. Uh, I just compare the information that the one human, a very good Go player, this uh, Japanese game, just lost against the machine. We have the same situation in the chess world. And uh, of course, I have a smile on that uh, information because about art is to relate as an individual in their time. And uh, that's how we became to abstract art after Rembrandt, the world of art emancipated with artists. So abstract for abstraction, for example, color, light, it's not a surface, it's an attitude. And exactly this attitude is the question we should focus. The result is nice, but it's not art. Do you not worry about fakes? Perhaps a digital reproduction of your own work, for example? No problem at all. It, a fake is a fake and, uh, and it's a surface. It can be coexisting in this world. In China, there's a huge city with about 40 to 60,000 artists. They all wait out of the street to paint what you like. You just bring your stuff. And this is not the question these days, how artists should act. Yeah, surface is one side, but has nothing to do with an artist's career or biography. OK, well, moving to more contemporary creation now. April is the cruelest month, according to the poet T.S. Eliot. But the spring has brought a new crop of art here to Paris. And one show is taking the title of that poem, The Wasteland, as its inspiration. Wasteland, new art from Los Angeles, is taking place in two Parisian venues, the Mona Bismarck American Center and the Tadeus Ropak Gallery in Pantin. The curator, Shamim M. Momin, brought together works from the west coast of the United States for this group show, and Francois Cat went to check it out. Wasteland. This collective exhibition shares its name with a T.S. Eliot poem, written in 1922. This poem about kind of the um, uh, human condition at the moment post-World War I, a, a kind of despair in the devastation and an increasing loss of faith and morality. So that became a kind of platform of ideas for the artists uh, invited to the show to, to work from, to create new works. All 14 artists have a link to California Rye Rockland transforms discarded objects into works of art. I'm attracted to objects that I empathize with or feel like I want to celebrate the abandoned and forgotten. And in an ideal world, one walks away from seeing some of my work with the feeling of, of curiosity about some of the other lowly things that they may um, stumble over otherwise. Visitors are also struck by the contrast between the fancy halls of the former private residence that holds Paris's Mona Bismarck American Center and the art on display. It's modern and traditional, both are highlighted. You can really sense the artistic void that's prevalent today. The featured artists are also present at the Thaddeus Ropak Gallery in Pantin, that showcases performances, sculptures, interactive installations, concerts, and photography. It's an unusual collaboration between a gallery and institution initiated by Land, a Los Angeles artists' collective exhibiting abroad for the first time. Now, as we can see from that report, T.S. Eliot's poetry is quite present in those pieces. Do you ever find inspiration from other art forms when making your paintings and installations? 
Historically, yes, of course, and uh, actually the origin is here in Paris, the Les Situationistes, mm -hmm. Guy Debord, the, the derivers, the people who, who walked uh, along the streets, crisscross, mapping the city. The main difference I recognized very early is they refused to work. I, I love to work. And uh, beside that, in the 50s, the situation is, of course, uh, another big artist, Fernand Léger, just by chance also well known here in Paris. But actually, it's exactly these both aspects uh, which brought me on the one side from the urban three-dimensional world to the canvas. And if you uh, took a closer look to the biography and to the productiveness of Léger, you know why I'm such a fan of him. So Paris is a bit of an inspiration for you as yes. well. Well, that's all for this show. Thanks, Franz, for being with us. Thank you. We'll leave you with images from a new exhibition showing here in Paris at the Pompidou Centre. It's showing work by painter Paul Klee. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.